afterburners unleashed. Paris to London or London to Paris, here we go in 3 hours. Those were the glorious days of the past, when we could hop across the Atlantic in half the time it takes us now. Welcome everyone aboard Concorde, the only supersonic passenger jet. Or is it? Over at the Soviet Union, they too had a supersonic transport of their own, the Tu-144. These two aircraft were part of the larger race, the race to see which country could develop a supersonic passenger plane. Three countries, three superpowers, three concepts. The only two would ever take to the skies. In one of the largest political races in the aviation world, Europe would get off to an early start, only to be followed closely by the Soviet unions, which created their Tu-144. America's entrance came from Boeing, though their aircraft would never take to the sky. So, the supersonic dream was really down to these two aircraft. Except, this dream would turn out too costly and dirty to ever turn into reality. But still, one would go on to become an icon, while the other a less remembered aircraft. Why is that? Before we answer this, if you're new here, do consider subscribing and stay tuned for more great videos on the way. Also, why not check out Pilot Sam's 004 YouTube channel for more great infinite flight content. A link is in the description below, so do check it out. Let's start with performance. Concorde flew 100 passengers in a typical one-class layout to a distance of 3,900 nautical miles at Mach 2. Max speed was Mach 2.2. On paper at least, the Tu-144 was supposed to outrun the Concorde, carrying 140 passengers in two class, flying 3,500 nautical miles. But in reality, no one really wanted to fly the aircraft, while technical issues meant the aircraft never really got up to speed. Engines. The need for speed also meant need for thrust. Concorde was powered by four Rolls-Royce Olympus 593 MK610 engines, producing 32,000 pounds of thrust, normal and 38,000 pounds when lit up with afterburners. Tu-144 is powered by claws of RD36 engines, with up to 45,000 pounds of thrust at full tilt. Ultimately, these aircraft may be speedy, but their thirst for fuel killed them. Taking a look at the chart of efficiency, Concorde burnt around 18 tons of fuel per hour. The more efficient Klosov powered versions of Tu 144 burnt 24.4 tons of fuel per hour in cruise. Both are fuel hungry dinosaurs, especially compared to the 747 400, which burnt 10.3 tons of fuel per hour and carried well over three times the number of passengers. Moving on to cabins, while supersonic flights may cost the same as a business class fare, there's a second price to pay for speed, limited space. In fact, Concorde's narrow fuselage only took four abreast with 17-inch wide seats. The windows were like peering out of a letterbox hole, though a hot one at that due to the speed Concorde was flying at. Tu-144 was also a hot airplane to the touch, but unlike Concorde, it was noisy too, with noise at a deafening 95 decibels. That said, 
the cabin was slightly larger and had 5 breast seating. As a bonus, the T144 does have overhead storage space, something not available on Concorde. As a downside, the sensation on T144 was not of speed but noise, while Concorde was about flying fast in utmost luxury and comfort. Advantages and disadvantages, Concorde was a truly remarkable feat of engineering and to this day remains the only supersonic aircraft to carry fair paying passengers reliably with airlines in commercial service. It's the epitome of aviation machines, flying higher and faster. However, while comfortable, its cabin is smaller. TU-144 has a larger cabin but had so many mechanical issues it was unfit for passenger service. Both ultimately failed due to their operating economics with very high fuel burn and maintenance costs. When they were conceived, the price of all was cheap, not so when they entered service. Also, they were noisy and not particularly friendly for the environment. While sonic booms meant supersonic flights over land was banned, limiting the number of flights to only transoceanic flying. Orders, where Concorde received interest from many airlines initially, gathering options for 74 aircraft from 12 airlines including the likes of Qantas, Japan Airlines and Lufthansa. Eventually though, only 14 Concords were delivered. TU-144 had one interested airline, Aeroflot, and only 16 were ever built. So then, which country, Europe or Russia, won the speed race? Well, the moral victory goes to Europe with their incredible Concorde, a marvellous invention that lives on as part of aeronautical history. The real victory came from the country whose supersonic program ran into numerous delays. Having seen the many issues unfold on supersonic flying, America's choice to drop out was a smart one. And they would come up with a more modest but no less incredible passenger jet, the one and only Queen of the Skies 747. for watching and do stay tuned for more great videos on the way. So we meet then, clear skies ahead.